Hi everybody, I'm here at my local Barnes & Noble. This isn't anything special, it's just a Barnes & Noble. I will say though, this is the safest I've ever felt in a retail store. It's like a slightly worse library, and shockingly enough, not that much of a barn. Unrelated, did you know that rodents eat food? Yeah, so apparently according to this book series, little rat fellas like doing human things. So let's talk about that. In 1985, the book If You Gave a Mouse a Cookie came into the world by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond, and those two names reek of Scholastic. However, this book isn't for reading comprehension and pattern recognition, it's a warning. The first book stars a kid named Oliver. Why do I know that? Well, we'll get into that later. For now, let me make fun of a 40-year-old book series for children aged 4 to 8. Let's start by looking at the first book to get an idea of what the general formula is. Essentially, a child will do something for an animal, followed by the animal asking to get or do something else, and then this general loop continues until it eventually loops back to the start, where the animal asks for the initial thing, which was the catalyst, or the beginning of the end. The adjuvant, if you will. I did not use that word correctly, no siree. Page 1, there's already a lot to take in. Mouse has a backpack, implying he's capable of an advanced education, and Oliver lives in the void. Then the funny mouse asks for a straw for the milk for the cookie, both of which he disproportionately downs, which is insanely impressive, but he also should really just be dead. It's a chocolate chip cookie and probably dairy milk, both of which are fatal for mice. That's just a mix of being stupid and Oliver being a bad friend. But we don't have time to mourn. The mouse needs a trim to clean to sleep in your shit and to draw a weirdly realistic drawing of what I would assume his family is, all just leading back to him needing a cookie for his milk. It's a tragic tale about the reliance on others, and of course, a lyrism. As Oliver gives his energy and home for a mouse, ultimately exhausting him while leaving his house a mess, I'm sure his parents are gonna walk in and maybe yell at him, and that seems like a fair response in this case, especially over a mouse. Though again, it's kind of basic, a cute little thing, and it seems kind of harmless, like these two could just be friends at school and they're hanging out after school. But are you familiar with peer pressure? So because Oliver has an animal friend now, all of the other kids in town start giving animals random baked goods in the hope of getting new lifelong friends just like the mouse with Oliver. One kid gives a dog a donut, and then they pick apples and play baseball. That's not too bad. One kid gives a pig a pancake, and then she gets her furniture rearranged and has to build a treehouse alone in a single afternoon that's that's not as good that's definitely that's that, that's a little bit worse another kid gives a cat a cupcake and then they go to the beach and then they go to the gym and then they go to the park and then they go rowing and then they go to the science museum and why is the mouse at the beach this isn't your book you dummy my favorite kid is the one who sees a moose and goes i want that thing in my house and then he just goes in to be fair though the moose is pretty cool because he likes baking sewing and arts and crafts but if natural selection was more strict this kid should really be dead like for realsies with those common sense skills, it's a miracle he knows what a refrigerator does. Also, his mom somehow doesn't see the moose at all, which makes me wonder how that conversation would play out. The best way that I can describe these books is like an early October weekend afternoon that's cloudy but alright weather that's like 60 degrees outside and it's simply whimsical and that pleasant. 60 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. I don't respect a temperature measurement like Celsius because that can't hit triple digits without people burning to death in seconds. It's a flawed measurement system. There's a reason your tea was thrown into the Boston Harbor. But these five books aren't even the only wacky hijinks of the silly antics. The pig gets a party, and the mouse gets a party, and goes to the movies and school, and has holidays, and even gets a brownie, which again, dude, it looks like you're just trying to kill yourself. In these books, we learn more about the world the characters live in. In the pig party thing, the pig wants all of her friends to come over, but she decides to look for them at the carnival and they all get distracted and do stuff like go on roller coasters and build a sleep fort. Since they're without their kids, it seems like these fellas are just promoted to regular humans with human rights. This book specifically has a fox, a rabbit, and a snake, all of which never return and from what I know, maybe they got killed off or publicly executed, maybe they try to eat each other, it feels like there's something wrong, or maybe they did something to get kicked out of the friend group. The rest of the animals are sent just freeloaders, with Mouse especially. In the school one, it's implied he just lives with Oliver, despite possibly having a family. So either he doesn't have a family, or the mouse from If You Give a Mouse a Cookie has a Batman-level tragic backstory. I think the mouse is especially terrible when he has to go to the movies with Oliver, because he wants to get popcorn and then leave to go get a Christmas tree, and then at the end, he wants to go back to the movies. Like, dude, that Flipping costs money, you silly Billy. Why does Oliver even do this? Is it because he's a good friend, roommate, brother thing with his rodent? And really, how far can this wacky goofball little kid take these wacky misadventures? And there's only so much you can do with a mouse in overall, so I'm sure... 
I'm sure you'll be as surprised as I was when I found out that there is not just a book. Oh, no, 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 no. It turns out there's actually a TV show, the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie TV show, exclusive to Amazon Prime, with two seasons with over a hundred unique episodes, specials, and starring the lead of the voice actor of Mouse and Moose is Roger Craig Smith who you might recognize as a voice actor of your favorite blue superhero with red shoes. Lego Captain America. I watched a decent amount of episodes and I can definitely say it was a faithful adaptation, which like, I'd hope so. It's got the character gimmicks, Moose likes baking and sewing, Cat wants to go rowing, she's inventive, and Oliver wears pajamas of the thing. And they even eat things like the thing. Wowie zowie zuckaroo. Who would have guessed? Episodes overall have low stakes and a lot of the time it's about stuff like friendship and teaching creative and quick thinking skills and you know, it had its moments. I like the episode where they were dicking around on the beach and in the background you can just see Moose sewing. Or how in the episode about Cat and her best friend Esme, they essentially play out the book and the science museum doesn't allow canoes but they have a canoe check-in and that, like, that got a chuckle out of me, that's cute. All the characters are about what you would expect, but there still is definitely variety in personality between the kids and the animals. Mouse especially was important, and Dodoy, yeah, he's like the main character. You, 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 what, what did you expect? You, you thought Pig was going to be the main character? No, it's called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Stupid. He's an inventive little thinker. Like when Moose is worried about the pie, he covers it like the nice lovable rodent he is. He gets distracted easily like when at the carnival in that same episode, he wins all the games, which by the way, he didn't have to pay for it. And he also says stuff like, if you give a mouse a microphone, I'll want to talk into it. And like, okay, that, that's just pushing it. That's not even really that clever. And of course, like any silly franchise where you need to suspend disbelief, I'm going to suspend my suspension like I do with every single one of my exotic rambles. Like, why are these the only animals that are considered people or do they have lesser rights? Do, can they vote? Do they age like humans or their respective animals? How does this pie not fly off this cart? Who made this tiny submarine for mouse to operate to retrieve the marble? And why would you risk this submarine for a marble? I could talk about this for nine and a half more minutes, but I really don't. I can just put a mid-roll ad right here and I'll get away with it. But for real, I wasn't aware of this show at all. I'm sure a lot of you didn't know. I would really recommend it, especially if you're four to eight years old. Why are you on YouTube? You probably have like some second grade math. To, to, why are you here? Oliver's decision to give a mouse a cookie led to five talking animals becoming lifelong friends with a bunch of kids. And I'm not gonna lie, this town seems amazing to live in. Apparently Oliver never had to spend any money on mouse. Everything is free. Actually, no, Mouse wanted to buy a Christmas tree. Oliver had to buy that for some reason. That was the only exception. But otherwise, they get on carnival rides in this weird anti-gravity chamber that also exists, and they didn't have to pay to get in. So either taxes are miserable or sweet, cheesy rice, this right here is a thriving community. It's jolly, it's swell, it's basically a paradise world, and it's not real. But from all of this, I came up with the outcome of giving a rodent a delectable baked good. So, if you give a mouse a cookie, then he'll ask for a glass of milk, and one thing will lead to another, and you and all your friends will have cool animal pals to do awesome activities with, and your town will become way more wonderful to live in. And you know what? It's not fair. That should be me. Do you know what I would give to live in a PBS type show where everyone's super nice and there's no crime, no garbage, no judgment, everyone's nice to each other and the biggest conflicts are trying to cool down on a hot summer day or returning a backpack with a robot? Words cannot describe the sheer euphoria of this baby cartoon. When I was watching this show, I felt like I was reuniting with a long lost friend. It was bliss and there was a nostalgia for a thing I didn't even know existed a week ago when I woke up in a cold sweat wanting to know the purpose behind this beloved elementary school level book series. If I had to live through the books just to live through this fictional town, I'm not gonna lie. This is pretty sweet o McNeeto. I think I would do a lot worse for it. I am an adult. I have aspirations and this is one of them. The ever iconic TV show, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, which ran exclusively on Amazon Prime Video from 2017, only to be canceled in 2019, might possibly have given me a new life goal. I gotta try this. I'm gonna give a horse a hot dog, a chicken, a churro, and maybe even a koala some ketamine. What's the worst that can happen? Well, there is no longer a Barnes & Noble.